So I have two more lessons in this book, and it'll be 10.1 and 10.2. 10.1 is called Circles, and there are pretty much just two different pieces to this that we're going to look at. One is the distance formula that I uh, did a long time ago. So let me put the graph up here. The distance formula is, I'm not going to go through how it was developed, but uh, it's basically um, the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to take 1x minus another x. Okay, that 2 and that 1 just tells you that we've got two different x's. And then we're going to add So, if you remember, you know, we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so, that's where this distance formula came from. And it helps us when we're trying to find out the distance from, say, this point to this point. So, we find our x value here being 1, 2, or our coordinate value there. And our coordinate values up here would be 8, 9. And in order to find the distance between those two points, we take our x's, 1 minus 8 from here, plus, and then we look at our y's, 2 minus 9 squared, and we just solve from there. So we've got 1 minus 8 is negative 7 squared, plus 2 minus 9 is also negative 7 squared. So we get 49 plus 49 is the square root of 98. Okay, so the distance here is a square root of 98. So that's really all you're doing when it comes to finding the distance um, between two points. So let me erase this and we'll try one example. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of that in this lesson. So let's look at example two. If they, it said find x, if the distance x5 2, 3, 4 is the square root of 2. So let's graph 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then they give us another distance, right, or a different, another coordinate here, x5. Well, we know it's up 5 on the uh, graph. We don't know where because they haven't given us the x value to show how far down this way or this way our x is. But we do know that it's on this line. It's on the x or the y equals 5. And we also know that the distance from here to the point on here is the square root of 2. So let's go ahead and put what we know in for this formula and go from there. So we've got D equals the square root of um, X. We'll just use this X as our first and we'll call it X minus this X plus our Y's. This Y, oops, I'm not gonna put it in as a Y. I know what the number is, five minus 4. And instead of the d over here, we're going to put the square root of 2, because we already know what that is. They gave us the distance. All right, so given that bit of information, um, shouldn't be too terribly difficult to find, because we have a square root on both sides, so we're going to square <clears throat> both sides. So when we square both sides, we're going to get x minus 3 squared, because all we did was took off the parenthesis, or the square root sign. 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. So we end up with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do the FOIL method on our x minus 3. And we get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus this one right there. Come on. All right, change colors on us. So let's move that 2 over. So let's subtract that from both sides. Okay. And now we can combine these. And I'm 
going to look and see if I can break that into two binomials. I can. That's going to be my first go-to. And I end up with x minus 4 and x minus 2. So my x equals 2 and 4. Those are my two answers. Now, how do I get those two answers? Um, because I'm looking for a point along this line that is the square root of 2 away. And it says I have two points. I have one that is at 4. So let's get my... They're saying I have one point there, and I have another point there. Now, one of the things that you need to recognize about here is, is the distance between here the same as the distance between here? Yes, it is. There's two places where that distance is the same. So it's the square root of 2 here, and it's the square root of 2 here. So that's why we were able to get two different answers there. It would be the same way if we would have gotten 6 for an answer. So we'd have one point, let's say, here, and another point, say, here. The distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that's why we have two answers there. Okay, so let's continue on, make that smaller, and move that out of the way, and we'll keep going here. We're going to start talking about circles now, and circles use the same distance formula pretty much because what we're looking for in a circle is its center point and how far it is from its center point to the radius. That's what we need in order to graph a circle. We need this distance, or, we're, or instead of distance, we're going to call it the radius. So we're going to use kind of the same formula here. x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So r is the radius. That's the distance. Um, the a and the b represent two numbers that are the center point of the circle, the coordinates of the circle, or the coordinates of the center point of the circle. So let's look at, let's erase this mess and let's get a real graph up here and uh, get moving on that. So we'll put this over here. And example number three, top of page 774, says find the equation of the circle that has a center at negative 3, 2, and it has a radius of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to have a radius of 5. Sorry for my crummy circle. So that's what we're looking for. The radius is 5, and my center is at negative 3, 2. Now, according to this formula, like I said, the A and the B represent the center of the circle, and the r represents the radius. So let's just plug in the numbers that they gave us. So we have x minus, what is, what is the x value that they gave us for the center of the circle? They gave us negative 3. Okay? Plus y minus, what did they give us for the b portion? The, uh, the y value, they gave us 2. And it says that the radius is 5. <clears throat> so all I did was replaced the letter with the number they gave us, the letter with the number, and the R here with the 5. So now I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 3 plus y minus 2 equals 25. And that's your answer. So when they give you the center points and they give you the radius, it makes it really pretty simple to, uh, to find the answer there. All right, see if I can get rid of all this stuff here so I don't have to rewrite my formula every time. All right, <clears throat> example four. Give the equation of the circle. So this time we're going to write the equation of the circle. Um, given the information that they have. And again, this information is r 
equals three. Radius is three. And the center is at the origin right there. And the center is going to be a zero, zero. So we're going to write that the exact same way. X minus our X value is zero. Our Y value for the center is zero. And that equals three squared. So I simplify that. Simple, whoops. Simplify that equals nine. So there is our equation. Notice when our center point of the circle is at the origin, it's just x squared plus y squared because the zeros don't count. So there's no long formula like this. So whenever you see um, a circle described this way as just um, x squared plus y squared, you know that the center of the circle is the origin and you know what the radius is. The radius of this is three. So whatever this number is, if there's not an exponent of two up here, you know that the uh, radius is the square root of that. That's how we got rid of um, the squared here. We took the square root of that, of square root of three squared, which is nine, and we got three. So the radius is three. So um, let's move on to one more. And uh, then we'll get into some that are a little trickier, but they're not too bad. And then we'll be done with circles. All right, example six says they want you to graph x squared plus y squared equals nine. Okay, so if they want you to graph it, shouldn't be too terribly difficult because we know, like I said just a minute ago, we know that our center point is at zero, zero because there's nothing added or subtracted to the y values like we have here. We also know that the radius is going to be a number that when we square it, we're going to get nine, and that means it's three. So I like to do this on both sides of the, of the dot, kind of give me some template there so I can draw a somewhat um, round circle. So that's what they wanted there. Now let's look back at example five. I did not do that one and we really need to uh, to do that one. And then we'll do one more. All right, find the center and radius and sketch the graph of the circle whose equation is. Okay, so they've given me the equation. X minus one squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4. All right, first of all, let's look at the radius. According to our formula, our radius is this number here. So that when we square that number, we get 4. So what number squared gives me 4? In this case, that answer is 2. So my r is 2. Because in order to graph this, I have to have the radius and I have to have the center point. Okay, so let's look at this formula here and compare it to here. So this one matches with a negative sign, so I can rewrite it just exactly the same. But notice this has a negative and this has a positive. That means this one, it has to have a negative. Well, I can't just change this to a negative 3, but I can rewrite this as y minus negative 3. Okay, so this is really y plus 3, but this formula says it's got to have a negative here. So in order for it to have a negative, I had to make this a negative. So that gives me a clue then of what my radius or what my center point is. It's going to be whatever a is and whatever b is. Well, a is 1, and b is negative 3. Okay? So one way to get this, if you don't want to remember this part here, if you just look at these two, you take the opposite of that and the opposite of that, and that gives you your uh, center point. So 1, 1, 2, 3. So my center point is right there. And I have a radius of 2, and then I can just draw my circle like that. 
And that's how you get that one. All right, one more, and then we'll be done with 10.1. All right, so this one goes all the way back to uh, doing some completing the square. Some of you absolutely hate completing the square, but uh, that's what we're going to end up with. All right, first step, we put all of our like variables the same with their sign. And so notice that I did, I took this x, this x and put it over here, put this y over with this y, so they're all together. And this number here, I'm going to put it over here, so I'm going to add it to both sides. And when I do that, I get that equal to 12. Now I'm going to rewrite this. Leave a space. Leave a space. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do completing the square here and completing the square there. So I need a number to put in this place, this third place. Place here. So I take the second term, 6, take half of it, and square it. So when I do that, I get a plus 9. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Half of that, square it, and that's going to be plus 4. <clears throat> okay? But because I added a 9 and a 4 to this side, I have to add a 9 and a 4 over here. So now I have this and this, and that equals, um, what is 12 plus 9 is 21, plus 4 is 25. So I've got, I've taken care of that. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to break this down and put the right numbers in here. So remember, completing the square, you take the square root of the first term. Then we take the square root of the last term, and we put this sign there. Do the same thing over in this other one. Square, oh, this should be a two. I'm sorry, you're probably yelling at me through this whole thing. Square root of the y, square root of the four, this sign. Now we have this written in the standard form of a circle which means now we can actually get the information we need to draw the circle because it says graph it. All right, so I know that this is going to be negative 3. It's the opposite of the positive. This is going to be a positive 2. So that's the center point of the circle. This is our squared. So what number times itself is going to give me 25. So therefore, my radius is 5. A lot of folks forget that, and they give me a radius of 25. No, radius is the r, not the r squared. So then it's real easy to graph here. Negative 3, 2, with a radius of 5. And I can draw my crummy circle right there. So that is it for lesson 10.1.